guys doing? You guys are having a good time? Yeah. Good. All right. Hi. Uh, I'm Salim Abu Salam. And it's interesting. The name Salim runs in my family since generations and generations in the past. I mainly want to tell you guys about three Salims. One, there's the first Salim, a great leader of his own tribe. He was a great leader and a very wise, wise man. And one day, well, it was when my family was up in Persia. And one day, that great Salim had a feverish nightmare that his entire tribe was engulfed in flames. I know, it's so weird. Then he woke up, took all the good Muslims and ran away. A few days later, they got word that their entire tribe was actually attacked by another tribe that actually worships fire. So weird. Then, but a few generations after that, my family had moved to Lower Egypt. Uh, there was another Salim. Very, very wild man and also like very intellectual. Great man. Married 99 women. 99 women. It's insane. He's a beast. I, I couldn't even like fathom that idea. 99 women. Great man. Had a mosque named after him. Great man. And then, there's the third Salim. Who's like, this TED talk's giving me anxiety. So, hi guys. Uh, my name is Salim. Uh, I'm 22. I'm a writer and director. I wrote and directed multiple short films. I'm currently working on my own 10-episode uh, traditional comedy web series centered around three high schoolers in their last year of high school, set to be released this October. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm just here to talk to you guys about a few elements of storytelling. Uh, first element I want to talk to you guys about is something called the rule of threes. So when I first started learning about writing, I was first introduced to this rule of threes and how uh, important it is, how pivotal it is uh, for storytelling and how specifically if you want to write comedy, you have to implement it. And we already did. So uh, there's first the setup, which I introduced to you guys, the first great Salim. And I also told you guys the prompt, which is there are three main Salims in my family. This is how it's introduced. Then there's a continuation, where I introduced to you guys the second Salim. By then, like, it's kind of cemented in the back of your subconscious that you guys kind of have an idea where this is going. You guys kind of know that there's going to be an ac accumulation of all this energy that's going to go into a specific punchline. And then I introduce the punchline, and then I make a little bit, and then you know, that's how it goes. So that's kind of the, th the rule of threes. If you guys think about it, the number three was very, uh, it's very comfortable in the human psyche. And you can trace it back since like the dawn of time. We have uh, three Abrahamic religions. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have three Christopher Nolan Batman films. That's definitely great. Uh, and uh, even in cinematography, when you're shooting a frame, uh, if you put your subject in w uh, a third of the frame, it's probably going to be more comfortable to look at and easier on the eye. So that's just the rule of three. Second thing I want to talk to you guys about is something called a trope. Tropes are uh, an element of a story that just reoccurs in a lot of different stories uh, till it like cements its idea as like a very uh, important thing or something that reoccurs in so many stories. So you can either subvert it or uh, insist on it. So it can sometimes seem like it's a generic thing to just add something that all the other writers also add. I want to give you guys a few examples of what a trope entails. So uh, in TV, there's something called a bottle episode. A bottle episode is basically uh, in TV uh, where the studio would tell the writers, you have no budget, you have no guest stars, you have no locations, write me a story. And then the writers would all come together and then create a story that's, uh, oh, surprisingly in the main location where they usually film in and all the main settings happen within that one small setting throughout the entire episode. We've seen that in Community, Parks and Recreation, House. You can think about it. It probably happened in one of your favorite shows. Another example of a trope is something called Demoted to Extra. Demoted to extra is when one character gets a significantly less and less of an important role as the story moves along. Uh, usually it's in uh, 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 multiple parts of a series, so it can be in like a blockbuster series, so like Cyclops in the X-Men, or uh, John Oliver's character from Community, or one of the second Selim's ex-wives, who su su surprisingly got smaller and smaller role as it kind of moved along. Uh, a trope that I kind of discovered was uh, something that I like to call the Jake phenomenon. I've seen it in a lot of um, upcoming writers' works, uh, specifically uh, writers that have Arabic heritage and people that grew up in Arabic countries. And they kind of shy away from putting their characters in Arabic settings uh, and giving them 
Arabic names. So they put it in undisclosed locations because they're kind of ashamed of it uh, and give their characters vague Western names like Jake. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of uh, fell into the Jake phenomena when I was first started writing when I was 17. And I couldn't write past the fifth page. I couldn't. I, I, I had to put it aside and then go into university, start to learn more about myself and more about my cultural heritage and where it came from. And then I, I would revisit it, having changed, having learned, and kind of revisit and give it another chance. And uh, slowly I incorporate more and more elements about where I come from, uh, my identity. And it slowly made sense until I could finish the script completely. Uh, I was kind of really excited about that, and uh, it kind of made sense to me. But I did, in the beginning, fall to it. So in my 10-episode situational comedy web series centered around three high schoolers in the last year of high school, set to be released this October, rather than have the characters be called uh, Simon, Gary, and Freddy, uh, I opted to call them something more close to home, like Yasin, Qasim, and, well, Freddy. But you win some, you lose some, all right? <laughs> yeah. So the third thing I want to talk to you guys about is something called the circular structure of storytelling. Uh, the circular structure of storytelling is a very important formula when you're approaching to write a script for the first time. And it usually works better uh, in works that you keep going back to. Like maybe a comic book or a TV show or a long lost love that 99 women couldn't fill. Uh, so let me introduce you guys to the circular structure of storytelling. Uh, well, you have a character, uh, a main character, who's in a, in a relaxed position, in a relaxed state. So let's take, for example, the great Salim. He's sleeping. Uh, uh, he's continuing uh, uh, to live and live his life normally. He's introduced to a weird situation. Then he's forced to adapt to it, which is uh, basically... The weird situation was that uh, he had a weird dream that he thought was coming. Then he adapted to it by taking all the good Muslims and running away. Uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, he gets what he wanted, which is to survive. Uh, pays a heavy price. All the other people that are in his tribe, he was a leader. And he, they just, like, suspiciously, you just left them to be there, great Salim. Wow, great job. Then uh, you go back to a place that is comfortable again. And, uh, well, that's probably the desert, too, to save costs if we're going to, like, try and attempt to... Yeah, having learned. Did he? Maybe. Uh, yeah, so uh, Dan Harmon, the person that I kind of learned the circular structure of storytelling from, uh, introduced this idea of uh, the circular structure. And at first, that didn't make sense to me. But then he gave us a few examples. He said, if you have a small movie called Star Wars, the movie would be about Luke Skywalker destroying the Death Star. But if you have a TV show called Star Wars, it would be about a white-collar dude who has a desk job on the Rebellion hangar. The main difference here is, in the movie, the Death Star is destroyed. But in the TV show, that star stays. And it made sense to me as to cut costs. Literally, when you're a writer, you, uh, especially when you're doing something that's very small budget like a TV show, you literally cannot afford for your characters to have big dramatic realizations about their character's self-worth. Oh, suddenly, the only way I'll be my own person is to backpack across Europe. You do not have the location budget to afford something like that. So it makes sense that you want to take, take your characters back to home, take them back to home, take them back to where they started. But as I started to learn more and more about writing and or incorporated the circular structure of storytelling, I started to think to myself why a lot of audiences really found the circular structure of storytelling very comforting and kept uh, seeking it out in TVs, in comic books, in whatever they were uh, watching. Because it's change that made sense. I'll, a lot of people would try and sell you change in extremely huge amounts of uh, sizes. So like they tell you, oh, if you want to be successful, you have to come up with an idea that's completely different, that's never been done before. Or you have to uh, be the wackiest person, the completely new identity. No one has to have any similarities to your character. And that's, that's how it just continues to go on and on and on and on. But it's, that's not why we seek out TV. We seek out TV because it's realistic. They're selling you change in small amounts. So I want you guys to think about it. You guys are going into one of the most intense parts of your life, and also one of the most adventurous parts of your life. Uh, you might uh, apply to a university that you don't get the letter of acceptance to. You might uh, take a job that you don't like, or uh, maybe you just uh, have a mental health relapse, and then you find yourself in the same position you were in six months ago, a year ago. And I want you guys to realize that just because you're in the same position you're in six months before, maybe a year before, that doesn't mean you didn't get something that you cannot put a price on, which is change, which is something that is so valuable to our characters. This, it's also why 
we can look at a TV show and call that person a hero because in, in reality they're just relatable because they're just like us. So uh, I want you guys to go out there and just seek out new information uh, even if you're writing your own comic book or you're writing your own novel or getting a new job or maybe uh, making your own 10 episode situational comedy web series centered around three high schoolers in the last year of high school set to be released this October. I want you guys to realize that the most important thing is to feel comfortable within your own circle, within your own skin, and that's what's most important. Yeah. So quick recap. I mentioned my show three times. That's the rule of three. I ended the show with an emotional monologue, which is uh, a pretty generic trope, if you ask me. And third, we started this journey together, you guys and me, this anxious kid, who didn't think he could do this, and here we are, 12, 13 minutes later, having changed, having learned, and I thank you guys for that, and thank you for coming to my TEDx talk. Thank you.